President Obama began 2016 with a sign that he would not go gently into his lame duck year. His call to action on gun control signals what may be a busy year to further what he considers key issues to his administration and legacy. So we might expect a number of executive actions or executive orders. The difference makes a difference. Scott Thuman has our reality check. On his first day of his last year in office, President Obama called on Congress to take action on gun control. We know we can't stop every act of violence, but what if we tried to stop even one? The media and politicians went into overdrive. The president of the United States may come out with an executive order regarding guns. The president set to lay out a series of executive orders. I am very proud of President Obama's announcement today. To On my first day behind that desk, those orders are gone. Until we have a Congress that's in line with the majority of Americans, there are actions within my legal authority that we can take to help reduce gun violence and save more lives. The president's plan to tighten control and increase enforcement of firearm laws in the U.S. by expanding background checks is an executive action, not an executive order. And yes, there's a difference, explains Stephen J. Wayne, professor of government at Georgetown University. When he issues an order, it's usually a broader statement of in the future, I want it to happen this way. When he issues a memorandum or a directive or makes a statement, it's much more specific. But they're mainly ceremonial and they don't have the policy impact. In his action, Obama is bypassing Congress and earning him some criticism. Representative Brian Babin of Texas calls it a distraction and, quote, disservice to the American people. Are you all being just pushed on the sidelines while the White House steers the ship? Well, he would certainly like, it, like to have it like that, but that's not the way the Founding Fathers set this, this republic up, and that's not the way the Constitution reads. Some Democrats, including Representative Mike Thompson of California, have come to Obama's defense. So the, the critics of uh, the President Obama's executive uh, actions say that you know that's uh, he's overstepping his boundaries. You know he's he's going to he thinks he's the king. The same folks are, say it's okay to take arms and uh, and overrun a government building. It, it's it's a real contradiction. This isn't the first time the president has taken heat for overstepping Congress. Institutional and political rivalries will generate debate over executive order. The truth is, even with all the actions I've taken this year, I'm issuing executive orders at the lowest rate in more than 100 years. So, so I, it's, it's not clear you know, how it is that Republicans didn't seem to mind when President Bush took more executive actions than I did. He has a point. Maybe. President George W. Bush issued nearly 300 executive orders during his two terms in office. But President Obama isn't too far behind. He's at nearly 230 so far and vowing even more. President Obama has warned continually now that he will not sit idly by on the sidelines during his final year. And it's a safe bet that he will outline even more new actions in his State of the Union speech Tuesday night. All right, Scott Thuman, thanks so much. An update to Breaking Bad, our report on the billion-dollar federal agency NIST that got caught with a meth lab operating in its midst. Christopher Bartley, the NIST police lieutenant who was operating the lab when it blew up last July, was sentenced this week to 41 months in federal prison. Congress is investigating what one Republican calls the culture of waste, fraud, abuse, and misconduct at NIST police services, from alleged time card fraud to missing SWAT team gear, which NIST denies. Still ahead on Full Measure, it's must-see TV for this campaign season. Next, a closer look at the substance of debates past and the profits of reality TV politics.